Um, let's go, let's start in John chapter 17. John chapter 17. This chapter uh, is you getting to hear Jesus talk to his father. His prayer life is represented in this chapter because it's a prayer. The whole chapter is him talking to the Father before his exit from the earth. And, and we got to listen in on this, this prayer. And uh, my goodness, there's so much of it we'd like to dive into, but I'm going to restrain myself. And I'm, I'm getting to one verse, but I want to read the previous verses to get there. So we'll start in verse 1. John chapter 17, verse 1, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, so now we're, we know it's a prayer. He said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, right. the only true God, and that they might know Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I like this next phrase. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Every one of us, we don't leave till we say that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We don't leave till we can say that. Amen. Amen. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Wow. He's going back to something. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? What he laid down to come here. That's right. Amen. Verse 6, I have manifested thy name. God's name became visible yes. through what Jesus did in the earth. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they are, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept my word. They have kept thy word. Verse 7, now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Verse 8, for I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them. I want us to look at that eighth verse. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. This is just the starting point of what I, where I want to go tonight. Jesus said, I only say what I hear my father say, yeah. right? Yeah. So he did not, when he, that doesn't mean that sitting around a dinner table and in fellowship with people, he could only say what heaven said. Yeah. <laughs> it means when he was representing God, yeah. he was not representing himself yeah. in his own opinion. Yeah. When he was ministering to the people, yes. when he was imparting and demonstrating and moving and working, yes. it was not himself he was making known. Yes. And, and his opinions and his preferences and getting his way, he was there to carry out the Father's will. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 So he only did what he saw his father do, and he only said what he heard his father say. Now notice here he says, for I have given unto them the words. Jesus is getting ready to leave the earth. Yeah. Notice what he didn't say, I have given unto them the anointing. Yeah. I have given unto them, now that's going to come. Yeah. But upon his exit, he's got something for them. Yeah. And what he says that he had for them, and it wasn't just that day he gave it, but all along he was giving it. I have given them your words. Why? Because if they will receive these words, nothing is off limits. 
The anointing will meet it. Miracles will meet those words. Healings will meet those words. Provision will meet those words. Wisdom from God, direction from God, victory. Everything they need in life will come out of the words. It'll come out of the words. So verse 8, for I have given them the words, and look at this, the words which thou gavest me. He didn't just give us his own intellect. (laughs) He gave us the words that God gave him, and those words produced through Jesus. They produced lame walking, dead raised, lepers cleansed, demons cast out. It per, those words acted, believed, yeah. and acted on produced. Yeah. So Jesus said, now I'm leaving, but I'm giving them uh-huh. yeah. what I worked with right. to get the results I got. Yes. It was words. Yes. Words. Yes. He said, I have given them the words which thou gavest me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we know what's most precious to him because he's at his departure here, he's letting them know. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. That was most precious to him, what his father said. Directed his entire existence here. It governed him. It's it's what directed his thought life. It's what grabbed his attention. It's what directed his actions. Words. Not emotions. Not feelings. Words. Words Words work apart from how you feel about them. Doesn't matter whether you feel like they carry something with them or not. The words, they contain something. Words are containers. They hold something. What do they hold? They hold what they say. They contain the power to perform what they say. And so when you say those words, then they are able to perform what those words say. Uh, For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. Look at this last phrase. And they received them. So... He gave us words, but we have a responsibility toward those words. Amen. 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 And that is to receive them. Yes. How do we know if we received them? If we're doers of them. Amen. 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 Not if we've memorized them. Right. Not if we have an affection toward them. Yes. Not if we're able to repeat them yes. and confess them. Yes. But are we doing them? Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 The receiving is only seen in the doing. Praise the Lord. The words that Jesus gave us that were from his Father will produce through us what they produce through him. They'll produce the exact same thing because they're the exact same words that contain the power to perform what they say. So how do we know if we received them, are we showing the fruit of it? Okay, so that's not the direction I want to go tonight. (laughs) Yeah, but that was so good it's got to be said. Not because I said it, that's what Jesus said, the words. The words is, are what produced yes. Yes. bore much fruit that glorified his Father. Yes. Amen. Amen. Words that were given, the whole word yes. of God yes. has been given to us. That's right. It's not just to produce something through us, mm-hmm. but it's to produce a transformed life. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. That our lives yeah. are transformed yeah. by words. Right. Our marriages transformed by words. Our minds transformed by words. Yeah. Words. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, words help us. Amen. These words from God help us to see ourselves as God has made us. Yeah. Without these words, we can't see ourselves. 
these words, this word is a mirror to us. Amen. In the word, we see us. Yes. And if we're not careful, the enemy is mm, listened to yeah. unknowingly right. so that he just keeps showing us our flesh uh -huh. Uh -huh. instead right. of us seeing in him, yeah. the mirror of who we are in him that only comes through words, yes. not through feelings, not through emotions. Right. It comes through receiving words, yes. just like miracles and healings yes. came through words that Jesus received from his father and then those words produced when they were acted upon in right. faith. Right. Right. There are things that God has said to us yes. about us yes. that should define us. Yes. And it's only in his words that define the true picture Amen. of us. Yes. And the enemy does not want us skillful yeah. with that view yeah. of us yeah. as the words yeah. show us. Yeah. 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 He wants us looking at this, yeah. looking at the past, looking at the natural, looking at what we could have produced but didn't produce, yeah. what we should have produced and failed to produce, yeah. Yeah. what we did but did it wrong. Yeah. He's always wanting us to look at these things to try to get us to see us. Yeah. Yeah. But us is not yeah. the natural. Right. Us is in Christ. Yeah. In Christ. Yeah. In Christ. Yeah. In Christ. Yeah. And we have to so establish yes. in us, yes. in our spirit man, yes. who we are in Christ. Yes. Because if we don't, everything is a struggle because we're trying to do things from out here and make it better instead of what is already successful in us. The life in us, the divine ability in us, the genius in us, the Holy Ghost in us. And we draw everything from that place and direct it out here. And it starts affecting everything out here. Um, you, you've heard it said, your pastor has no doubt quoted it. I've quoted it many times of what my husband said by the Spirit. In this last day revival, first of all, he said all previous revivals wrapped up into one. Then he said, all five-fold gift ministries operating at full potential power. Then he said all nine gifts or manifestations of the spirit operating at full potential power. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's not going to happen because it's planned. That's going to happen because we took words yeah. and received them yes. on every front yes. of our life. Yes. Because words have to be received regarding every arena. Right. Every arena. Every arena. That's right. Because the arena that we don't become skillful with receiving his words in. Right is the arena that the enemy will constantly poke on and hinder and hold back because whether you know it or not, demons are warring against the plan of God for your life. They constantly war. They're, fine. They're looking for a place of entrance. But they, they warred against Jesus every day of his earthly ministry, but they just couldn't get an inroad. They could not gain access. Why? Because they couldn't get anything planted in him. Therefore, they couldn't get a harvest out of it. Satan would plant a thought or suggest a thought rather, but Jesus wouldn't let it get planted. And so when Satan would come back, there was no harvest there. Why? Because Jesus had already planted other words. 
yeah. words from his father. Yeah. Hallelujah. And Jesus gave us those same words yeah. so that the wrong words yeah. we don't receive because yeah. we've already planted yeah. words that came from heaven. Yeah. By his stripes I am healed. Yeah. Words from heaven. Yeah. My God shall supply all my words from heaven. Therefore, we're not sitting around the dinner table talking about we're behind again. No, we don't plant those words because we received words. It's not enough that he gave them. They only work where they're received. So much of the time we're working to get results out here. In our business, yep. in our marriage, yeah. in our ministries, uh -huh. yes. Come on. in our family. We're trying to get results out here. But results come and flow easily without struggle when the inside isn't struggling. I have, I'm learning this more and more Financially, you know, every, every FOF church I've talked to during the COVID, they flourished yeah. Yeah. financially. Yeah. 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 I mean, partway through the year when we, previous, when we compared it to the previous year before COVID, $200,000 more had come in at that point a year later. And we weren't even to the end of the year yet. We don't know where it came from. It just came and every pastor that we've talked to in the FOF fellowship had the same That's right. report. That's right. Amen. Amen. And somebody was asking me, uh, because things are just on the increase, and they said some, they asked me a question about financially. And I said, I've just noticed this. The less I think about money, the more comes. That's all I noticed. Yeah. And, and, and somebody asked me recently about uh, somebody, everyone in here would know, what, know well, they're a general in the body of Christ, but financially they just flourish. And they said, uh, they asked me, they said, how do you think that that person flourishes so much? I said, because they don't think about finances. Yeah. That has nothing, it Amen. doesn't govern them. Amen. 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 What you're thinking about are the words you're accepting. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Those are the words you're receiving. What you're thinking about are the words that you're receiving. If they're worried words, if they're I don't have enough words, that's what you're receiving. And so because we've already planted God, we're planting God's words, then we don't need to hear different words. We don't need, different words will come, but we don't need to entertain anything differently because God already told us what to think. Yes, but this is this this last day revival that holds full potential is going to come because inside has stopped struggling. We're not struggling with us. Where we received who we are in Christ. We received those words. We received that we are the righteousness of God. We have received that we have the mind of Christ. Um, praise the Lord. The words that have been given us by Jesus and through the word of God. Uh, Romans 12, verse 2, you know this. Romans 12, verse 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you become conformed to the world? By what do you allow in your mind? How do you become transformed by what you allow in your mind? Getting in a ministry line, and I believe in ministering to people, laying on of hands. Thank God for that flow. That will bless you. It'll bless your life, but it'll never transform you. That's right. Never. Only words transform. Amen. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed 
by the renewing of your mind, receiving words yes. and saying, those are mine. Those, those are mine. govern me. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They direct me. Yes. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, look at this in, in Romans 12, verse 2 again. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed. Look at this. By the renewing of the mind. He didn't say by a new mind. Yes. Right. He said renewing. Yes. Yes. Meaning there must have been in place. Right. A right mind. And God is saying that right mind worked in you. When Adam was put in the earth, he had a right mind. But he received wrong words. And he lost his right mind. Not everyone who's lost their mind is in a padded cell. Worry is you losing. Fear is you losing. Amen. Right? Amen. Um, when I look at this word renew, the definition just in the dictionary means to take up again. Take it up again. It means to recover and it means to be restored to a former state. So he said, by the renewing of your mind, be restored to the former state that Adam had before he fell. Be restored to that. In Adam's right mind, thousands of species of animals walked before him and he said this name, this name. The genius of God was flowing through him without labor. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Without weariness, right. without tiredness, Amen. because his mind was with was yes. as God as as conducting the thoughts yeah. of God. Yeah. He was a spirit being, yeah. and that was flowing out yeah. and through. Yeah, right. yeah, that's right. Amen. That's right. No struggle. No struggle. <laughs> there was no struggle. There was no struggle. Um, God said something to me, and I won't tell you the whole thing that surrounded when God said this to me, but he said, the troubling of the mind, when someone's troubled in their mind, or they draw back from God, or they aren't bold with their faith, it's the same thing as Adam and Eve when they sinned and went and hid. Now, after they had been with the serpent, talking right. to that serpent, uh -huh. he gave them words they had never heard before. Right. And they received them. Yep. They acted on them. Yep. And when they came away from the serpent, they behaved as they had never behaved before. Right. Amen. It wasn't trying to fix the behavior. Right. You got to fix the words they received because the words they received directed how they behaved. And too many times we're trying to fix out here without fixing what words are we receiving? So God said to me, he said, when they came away from the serpent and they realized they were no longer clothed with the glory of God. So they tried to clothe themselves. And then when they heard God, because he would come in the cool of the day and fellowship with them, they again heard him. Notice God didn't withdraw his words. And they went and hid when they heard him. And God said to me, when had I ever treated them in such a way that they felt like they should hide from me? What did I ever do to them that said hide? Ne nothing. 
He said, they didn't hide because they heard me. Because I had never been anything but good to them. He said, they hid because of who they'd been listening to. And he said to me, when you draw back, even in faith, in prayer, in fellowship with God, draw back in any way. He said, it's not because I'm going to do something to you. It's because of who you've been listening to. And he said, because they had been fellowshipping with wrong words, they started thinking wrong about God and accused him of worth being, of needing to be hid from. Right. And he said, I had never done anything that would warrant them hiding from me. That's right. Amen. But because of who they had been listening to and words twisted yes. Come on. and started accusing God as someone to hide from when they never hid from the serpent. If we're not careful, wrong words can twist yeah. the way we see ourselves. Wow. Why do you think Satan comes as the accuser of the brethren with condemnation, words of guilt, words of shame? Why? So you will draw back from God. And that's really what condemnation, condemnation has never caused us to draw back from the devil. No. <laughs> It causes us to draw back from being bold in faith. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Come on. Amen. It causes us to draw back from the one who's only ever done something good for yes. to us, through us, and for us. Yes. It distorts. Yes. When we don't have it established in our spirits that we are the righteousness of God in Christ, words of condemnation, words of sin consciousness, pointing us back to where we missed it, where we should have done better, where we could have done better, how we didn't do better. All of that is serves to get our faith crippled to where we draw back. And this is what I'm saying for us to move into the full measure of what God has planned for this last day era. There has to be nothing inside tripping up over who we are. We have to be established, established, in, established in righteousness. We are made righteous, but we have to establish in us this righteousness in any time thoughts trouble us, it's because we lack renewed minds. So it's a, it's a, we're, we, we, we need to evaluate the words we're receiving. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Um, Romans chapter five. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. The Amplified Classic Translation says, For if because of one man's trespass, who is that? Adam. Because of his trespass, his lapse, his offense, death reigned through that one. What's that mean? Death was in dominion. Death was lording it over humanity. Death reigned through that one. Much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace unmerited favor, listen to this, and the free gift, the free gift, the free gift of righteousness, putting them into right standing with himself. How much more this free gift of righteousness they shall reign as kings in life through the one man Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. 
through the gift of righteousness, through grace and the gift of righteousness, we reign. We reign in king, as kings in life over circumstances, over anything that comes, over tests and trials. We reign. We reign. We can't keep those from coming, but when they come, they need, we, we need, they need to know who's in charge. We're reigning. Uh, when we went to, years ago, my husband and I went to Zambia, and um, they took us on a safari. They took Stephen and Ed on a hunt. I didn't care to go on the hunt. There's a fun story with that. Maybe we'll tell you one day <laughs> of Ed's great frustration. <laughs> And then one day they just took us out just to look at all the wild critters. We saw all kinds of things, all kinds of, it was a wonderful trip. And they took us by the hyenas and the elephants and the giraffe and all the different antelope and all the different kind of things. And they took us by the lions. The hyenas were up. They were crazy. They, they were, they were crazy. The, no, no, no renewed minds. They were crazy. They were just. You could just tell by their movements. Cray, 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 cray. <laughs> crazy number one, crazy number two, and they all living together, becoming more crazy. The elephants, uh, that was quite an event. The elephant, he had a guy that was with him that kind of would corral him and kind of keep him in certain directions. Well, when we came up on him, this man was hiding behind a tree and an el I'm talking like, not, not a sapling, uh -huh. a full grown mature tree and that elephant was stepping on it, going after that guy and he came in and ran and jumped on the back of our Jeep oh. to get her. and that elephant, we, we say, get off, he's chasing the Jeep. <laughs> We said, what was the problem? He said, I got too close to his female. Oh. <laughs> and I mean, this male elephant, you just walked him, he just put his foot in the middle of that tree and that thing popped over like nothing. It was impressive to watch. So I, we saw all kinds of entertaining activities going on. But one thing we saw about the lions, They just laid there. And you animals would run by them and they would just lay there. The Jeep would come by and they'd just lay there. Not because they're lazy, but because they know I'm top of the food chain. I'm top. And you would see animals within, you know, a region of them. And the, the lion wouldn't even get up. He'd just look. And those animals would take off. <laughs> Why? Because they knew yes. yeah. who's reigning. Yeah. 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 In the animal kingdom. Yeah. Little old pea-sized brains. Yeah. Know who's reigning. We have to build in us. We were born to reign. We were born again to reign. We weren't born again to be worried, no. troubled, Come on. harassed, Come on. pushed around. Come on. We are to reign. Amen. What determines that? How established we are in here. Have we established in us the words Jesus gave us? There's no way else to reign except through established words. You can't have somebody lay hands on you and you reign. Can't do it. That reigning flow comes through words received. Feelings ignored. Symptoms unacknowledged. Right? Come on. Praise the Lord. 
Isaiah 32, verse 17. And we may visit some of these again, but let's look at them tonight. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 17. Isaiah 32, 17, the King James says, And the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. Every day, every day. Quietness and assurance. Does that mean circumstances will be quiet? No, but I'm quiet. I'm untroubled. I'm undisturbed. Why? Because I'm established. That means, pastors, that when less people show up Sunday than last Sunday, you don't start questioning, am I called? If you start wavering based on out here, you're not established. Amen. If you start determining what you will put your hand to based on income, Come on. you're not established. Right. We put our hand to based on what the Spirit leads us in and directs us in. And since He leads us that way, we put our hand that way. And we don't back up for anything out here that doesn't seem to look favorable. You have to establish in you words. When God said to me, I'm going to give you, Sister Amy Simple McPherson, I'm going to give you her castle. At a time when I had more financial responsibility on me than ever in my life. And... Uh, when I had no idea of how he was going to do it, I would just remind myself, he said he's gonna give it to me. Yeah, yeah. What am I doing? I'm establishing what he said. Right. I'm not establishing what I figured out. Right. Yes. Amen. And this is what cheats the faith life. Yes, yes. Figuring it out and then establishing yourself in what you figured out. That's right. yes, That's right. Yeah. And making decisions based on what you figured out. That's it. Amen. Amen. What did God say to you? Yeah. You've heard me tell this. I don't know if I've told it here. If I have, I still am going to tell it again. <laughs> when Stephen and Morgan, they had a home that they, they're in now, but God directed them toward the home. They didn't have any of the down payment for it and uh, any of that. So God did creative things to get them in that home. Well, first of all, they, leased, they, they rented it because they, uh, they, they just took that approach and then while they were pulling other things together, that gave them, it bought them time. And then they entered into an agreement to purchase the home. In the meantime, the seller decided they didn't want to sell the home. So they were looking to them to default and not come up with the financing. Right. The week, two weeks before the sale was to close, the seller put a letter on their fence and said, you better have all of it done by this date or we're moving back in that day. That's how much they wanted it and they were very aggressive. And uh, so this was two weeks before the money was due. They had tried and tried and tried to get financing, could not get financing anywhere. So a week before the, the, it was supposed to close, the sale was supposed to close, they still didn't have financing. And we were sitting at lunch, me, Stephen, Morgan. It's raining outside. It doesn't do that in California. That's why I remembered. <laughs> It, it marked that day. We're sitting in the restaurant and he said, Mom, I've got to start moving out tomorrow. I said, why? He said, because 
I've only got a week. We have no prospects of financing anywhere in our view. And said, I cannot wait till the night before and move everything out. He said, I've been moving for years. Yeah. You know, him, uh, Ed and I, you're, mo you're the mover. Yeah. <laughs> and every time we needed to move something in the building, it, he's the mover. He said, I'm not doing, I can't do it the night before. There's two big garages. It's a large home. It's four and a half acres. I can't do it. I've got to start tomorrow. I said, how many days till the money's due? Seven. Do you know what God can do in seven days? It's called creation. Come on. And he said, Mom, I've got to, I, I don't even have a place to go to after this. I said, what do you mean? I got houses. <laughs> you, as long as you got a mom and daddy, you always got somebody to bail in on, right? <laughs> and he said, Mom, you don't understand. No, 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 I don't understand. I, no. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Stephen, you're trying to answer tomorrow today. I said, you can't answer how all of this is going to play out. You only have to answer one thing. Did God say that's your house? That's all you have to answer. That's all you have to answer. I said, did God say that's your house? I said, he said, he did. I said, then you know the answer to every single obstacle. God said, that's my house. When they say we don't have financing, God said, that's my house. When time, uh, time is running out, God said, that's my, see, that's the answer. God gave you words, receive them. Establish them in you. What did God say to you? Establish that. The Hebrews delivered out of Egypt did not establish in them. That first generation did not establish. God said, I have given you a land. It flows with milk and honey. They did not establish that in them. That was their whole downfall. It wasn't that they saw giants. It wasn't anything. They did not take what God said and establish it in them. Ha Pastor Nancy, how do you establish it? It's called Joshua 1.8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate. Meditate. Therein day and night. Lifestyle. 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 You drive that into your spirit through meditation of the mouth. Amen. Meditation of the thought life. Amen. Meditation through conversation. Amen. Yes. Amen. And so I said to Stephen, I'm just telling you, I don't know where the financing's coming from any more than you. I just know how to get the house. Amen. And that's, it's by saying, God said, that's my house. That's all you have to do and say, it's, you don't have to figure out. No, you go and you knock on every door financially. You rattle everything. <clears throat> that's not it. There's another door. Go rattle it. You, you, you don't sit back. Faith is what you do. Because you're establishing it in you, you can't sit home and wait for something to come to pass. Established people are moving people. How do you know it's established in you? Because you're moving toward it. You're moving toward it. You're moving toward it. So I said to him, Bear, who is my second grandson, when he was a, just a month or so old, he was laying on the bed one day and Morgan I don't know if she's changing his clothes or something, and he didn't like it. And I mean, he went from zero to 80 instantly. Like, man, I mean, like, 
screaming mad. I said, oh, that boy's got a short fuse. <laughs> you could see it as a newborn. Yeah, yeah. He had a short fuse. I said, y'all get to get on that. <laughs> that. <laughs> he gets mad like this. I mean, just yes. Yes. I said, that's going to be a good time. That's going to be a good time. <laughs> this is what every parent loves to watch. <laughs> in their own kids getting to deal with that. Yeah, 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 you gonna get it. <laughs> now he's a jewel of a boy now because they got on him. They lengthened his fuse. <laughs> but when he was little, I mean, he'd get mad at his brother or his sister or whatever, and I mean, he, I mean, he's just there, you know. So they would make him do what they called the bear. And the bear was, he had to put up his hands, he had to smile, and he had to dance. <laughs> that was how they made him deal with that flesh. So every time he'd get mad, they'd say, do the bear. And he'd go. <laughs> and he had to dance, because if he didn't, he would dance. <laughs> So in that conversation that I had with Stephen and Morgan in there, I said, Stephen, I'm driving. You're not getting in my car until you do the bear. I said, it's raining outside. I said, around my car. Around my car in the rain. In the rain. Why? We got to establish some things right here. If you don't get something established, you'll be swayed off of words that would cause you to arrive. Jesus gave us words. Why? So we won't float into the wrong thing, but we'll be established by words, not by feelings. Not by calculations, not by reasonings. Reasoning is nothing but doubt in disguise. You can call it, I'm calculating. No, you're, you're, it's doubt. It's trying, to, it's trying to calculate failure. In case God doesn't come through, I'm going to calculate this. Isaiah 32, 17 again. And the work of righteousness shall be what? Peace. Peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. Meaning when you get up tomorrow, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what comes out of Washington, D.C. It doesn't matter. I'm assured by what's established in me. Joshua and Caleb got to go in. Why? Because they established what a whole generation didn't establish. How did they establish it? Remember what Caleb said to Joshua? He said, I have wholly followed the Lord. Moses told me that I would go in. That would be my land. And he said, I have wholly followed the Lord. What did he do? He held to words. He held to words. The work of righteousness shall be peace. Now, when you're peaceful here, it doesn't matter what comes here, out here. It doesn't matter because the insides are established. They're settled. What's this mean? Again, let's read it. Isaiah 32, 17. And the work of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. What's that mean? The struggle's over. The struggle's over. When I establish that I am righteous, right with God, the struggle's over. If I'm struggling, I haven't established that yet. I haven't established those words in me yet that I have the free gift of righteousness. What's this mean? This righteousness is not performance based. It's a free gift. Jesus, listen, we're not righteous because we've done everything right. 
We're righteous because Jesus did everything right. And in his rightness, he said, I make my rightness your rightness. It's unearned. It's a free gift. So when condemnation and sin consciousness comes against your mind and accuses you, it's talking, it's trying to get you out of that you are already righteous. It's trying to get you to performance-based righteousness. And this is what couldn't happen through the old covenant. This is what Paul kept warning them about. You're trying to earn something. Now, what that means, when you establish who you are in Christ, that you are righteous, you establish that, you will not have to try to perform to earn it. There will come a flow of works out of you. It's called the fruits of righteousness. Fruits of our righteousness will flow out. And we don't earn righteousness by trying to read our Bibles enough, pray enough, serve enough, speak in tongues long enough. Because how many of you know, every time you go to receive a miracle, the devil says, ah, you haven't read enough. Oh, no, 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 no. You haven't prayed in tongues enough. Because the devil always wants to turn something back to a performance instead of I'm established in righteousness. But when you're established in righteousness, you ain't playing with what ain't right. I'm not trying to make light of or dismiss studying the word, praying. I'm saying this is not earned righteousness. This is one righteousness. Jesus won it for us, not for himself, for us. Amen. And because we are righteous, we don't step back. We don't step back. Our faith is bold. Our reach is far. Not a crippled reach, a far reach, and our grasp is firm. We don't let go. Amen. Well, we we're 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 scratching the surface here, but we'll 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 get there. We'll get there. All struggle, all struggle here. Yes, is an invitation to establish something here. That's right. Amen. All struggle in the mental arena is not a sign that you need to get rid of struggling thoughts. Yes. It's a sign that we need to establish in our spirits yes. some things, and that's what will deal with the troubling thoughts. Amen. Hallelujah. Send with me to your feet. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you tonight. <laughs> How rich we are. And we purpose to live as rich as we are. (laughs) And we thank you that that wealth flows from who we are in Christ. And we take our place. We take our place. We establish words that you gave us in in our inner being. Yes. In our thought life. Yes. We thank you for it, thank Father. You. Just lift up your hands and worship the Lord with me. Thank we glorify you. Glory. Say this after me. I am, I am the, righteousness the righteousness of God, of God. In, Christ. in Christ. That's not what I've earned. That's, not what I've earned. That's, who, I am. That's who I am. Right now. Right now. Today. Today. Therefore, Therefore, in righteousness, righteousness, I can be bold bold in my faith, in my my reach of faith, and in my grasp of faith. faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Father. We glorify you, Father. We glorify you, Father. We glorify you. We glorify you. 
We glorify you. How many times, how many times did Dad Hagen tell us? Find the in him scriptures, yes. in whom scriptures, yes. through whom, yes. by him, yeah. all these things connected with him and meditate on them. What's he saying? Establish them in you. Establish them in you. Establish them in you. And Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Were you blessed tonight? Rich, rich words. Hey, I want to make you guys aware. If you, if you uh, have your phone, why don't you pick it up? She mentioned there at the end, uh, Brother Hagen, which is uh, her uh, spiritual father. And she said, how many times did he say, Brother Kenneth e. Hagen, raise your hand. Come on. If So not everybody familiar with, with Brother Hagen, a, a general in the faith? Yeah, okay. Hey, what did I say at the beginning? We're responders, right? Right. How many familiar with Brother Hagen? All right, there we go. All right, and, and, and he said, uh, how many times did he say in him scriptures, through him scriptures, by him? I mean, that establishes our identity and how important it is that we do that, right? Nobody else um, can't establish this in your heart but you. I'm the only one that can establish God's words. Now, does he send us, does, does he send us help? Does he send us ministry gifts? Does he send us uh, uh, people that, that helps us? Yes, but they can't make us receive. They can't make us establish. So we must take responsibility, amen? And establish the, that identity on the inside of us. So Adam's going to help us here. And this is on our app, you guys. I don't know uh, if you've looked at this or not, but you can see this is our home page right here. All right? And at the very bottom, he's got it circled there, resources. If you hit resources, it will take you to this page. And you can see it's got daily Bible reading, weekly memory verses, uh, healing. I'm going to go back and talk about healing in a minute. But right now, the spiritual growth and confessions, if you hit that button, it's going to take you to this page. And see right up there? Uh, so we've got things that you can click on, those little dots, you can click on them. Uh, we've got our Now What book, guidebook for, uh, for Christians. And then we have a, uh, the PDF of the below in Him Scriptures. If you keep just scrolling there and not clicking on, the, uh, on that PDF, it's going to take you, I forget how many scriptures it is, but it's every single one in the New Testament that says in him, through him, by him, it's talking about you. Those scriptures are talking about you and that's what we're talking about, getting that established on the inside of us. So what a tool, right here, right here. And she talked about meditating, meditating, meditating. The word shall not depart out of our mouth or out of our mind. We meditate. We take those words and we meditate and we establish them in our spirit man, right? So this isn't that conflicts and that uh, adversity uh, isn't going to come. That's not what the faith message and the life of victory it's about. But it is about when adversities do come that there is a force on the inside of us that is greater than any adversity we come up against. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, if you'll go back, um, Adam, to that one. <clears throat> yeah, and so uh, Beyond Church Giving Declaration, that's on there. You can click on that. And then there is a, uh, a brochure. How many of y'all have ever picked up at the Connection Center? It's a help brochure. It's scriptures for different things uh, with just different things that come in our lives for family, for finances, for healing, for depression. Uh, full. This is full of help. This is full of help. Where does our help come from? Our help comes from the Lord and he gives it to us how? With words. 
He gives it to us with words. Hallelujah. So if you'll go back to the previous one, I want to highlight this also. And there's healing right beside that. If you click on that healing right now, uh, there is a downloaded book by Brother Keith Moore. Yes, it is. It's a very, very large book. But I guarantee you, if we'll take that book and we'll meditate on that book and we'll build it on the inside of us, uh, if we're needing healing in our bodies, healing will come. Oh man, that was weak. And not only will healing come, but we'll be building health in our bodies. Proverbs 4.20 says, My child, attend to my words. What does that mean? Give attention to them. For their life to those that find them. That find them. What does that mean? That means we're going to have to do something. They're, they're not life to everybody, but they're life to those that find them. Their life to those that establish themselves in them. And then their health and healing to all of our flesh. You know, so many times, and I'm going to stop here in just a second. But so many times, we as Christians just want someone to pray for us. We want somebody just to do our believing. And I'm not belittling. We do need to pray for one another. And, and, and it's an amazing thing that we can... Um, that we can release our faith together with one another for the, for the building up and, and for, you know, just sometimes we need some help. Sometimes we need some like-minded faith and some help. So thank God, thank God for that. But more than anything else, Jesus went and he, he went about, and you see this in all of the New Testament, he went about teaching and preaching and healing teaching and preaching and healing so so many times when we're saying will you pray with me for this I need healing in my body what we should be saying is teach me the Word of God teach me the words that I need to receive and establish in my spirit so that I can walk in health and healing hallelujah teach me the word teach me the word amen the other thing in that healing, uh, on that healing thing, is you can click on a link and it's Brother Kenneth e. Hagen, and he is just reading healing scriptures. He's just reading healing scriptures. So, how many of you knew that we had these resources on our app? Some, but not everybody. So, I hope that that you take uh, take advantage of it, and we're getting His Word established in us. Amen. Amen, Pastor. So. All right. Well, we love you. Let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Father, we're so grateful. We're so grateful for your word. We're so grateful for words of life. I declare over this house and over this people, over myself, that we are not only hearers of the word, but we are doers of the word. Hallelujah. You truly have given us eyes that see and ears that hear and a heart that receives and lays hold of your words. We value your words. We value your word. Hallelujah. And so, Father, I thank you for words that have been received and words that have been planted. And in the name of Jesus, I thank you that those words are held in our hearts. They're held. Uh, they're not let go of. And so I thank you, Father, for a harvest. I thank you for a harvest of life from your words. Hallelujah. We honor you and we magnify you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen.